Good morning, it's Bob Massey, Facebook Live. It's been a few weeks since I've actually taken the time to talk with you about anything substantive for the obvious reason of what we experienced now, October 1st. And again, I wanna thank all of those who were involved, both in uniform and outside of uniform. The other thing is, I think one of the forgotten entities here and people was the coroner's office. Uh, the first responders were amazing people that were not in uniform, but the coroner's office, those men and women had to get the bodies, review the bodies, and in many cases do autopsies. And so many of those people are actually experiencing, experiencing post-traumatic issues. So let's remember the coroner's office and those people that work there. Um, one of the most common things that seems to occur, and I talked a little bit about it before, but I, I get a lot of emails on this. So I wanna talk about it again. So you get sued in small claims court or you sue somebody in small claims court or you get sued, period, for money damages. Money's due and owing, breach of contract, whatever it may be, and a judgment is against you. So now the judgment is as good as a piece of paper that it's written on. A lot of times people will say to me, well, Bob, I want to sue them in small claims court. And I say, well, you could sue somebody and get a judgment, but how are you going to collect? But what I want to talk about today is a little few things about judgments, how they work, what they are, and the effect on you. And then I want to talk about your assets and how these assets are either exempt or exposed. So let's talk about a judgment. A judgment is a court finding. You cannot go put a judgment or a lien, that's L-I-E-N, on somebody's property just because. You're not permitted to do it. Unless you, for example, are a contractor who did home improvements, or you are a material person supplied materials to a home for improvements. There are specific laws on the book that say that you can put a prejudgment lien against that property, if you will, but then you have to go prove that in fact, labor was done, materials were delivered. And that again involves a lawsuit. And those liens, uh, subcontractors liens are only good for six months, they have to be enforced and then if they're not, then you could lose the right of the lien. But let's talk about a general judgment. Somebody sues you or somebody gets a judgment against you or vice versa. So a judgment, number one, uh, has to be signed by a judge and then you have the right to go record that judgment at the Clark County Recorder's Office. A judgment is good for six years in the state of Nevada, and then it can be renewed for another six years and over and over. There's certain procedural things that has to happen. But let's talk about once that judgment is in place, then what assets of yours are exposed? So let's say that somebody gets a judgment against you for $25,000, and they know where you work. So there is a process through the constable's office and the sheriff's office where your wages can be garnished. Matter of fact, I think recently I just did a, I think I just did a blog on that on, my, on our website, MasseyandMassey.com that you could go and read about. And I post blogs, Robert and I post, my son, we post blogs weekly. Um, go read about it. But, so you could be garnished up to 25% of your wages. Employers hate it, you hate it, it's embarrassing. That's number one. If in fact that creditor knows where you bank, there is a process where you could get, the, the creditor can get a writ of execution against that bank account for whatever monies that are there. And then, the, the people that go out, the constable's office, they get paid out of that money. So that's two ways it can, they can come after you. Rid of garnishment, your wages. Rid of execution, bank accounts. What's exempt? Well, I've talked to you before about homesteads. If you have a homestead on your house, you could homestead it. It protects you up to over half a million dollars. Uh, IRAs, 401ks, they are exempt as long as the money is remains in 
the retirement fund. In other words, let's say you have a 401k that's worth a million dollars, but at some point that money starts coming out. Well, then that money could be executed against because now it's cash. It's no longer in that protective fund. Uh, a lot of times what happens is people do some stupid things once they know there's a judgment against them. First of all, they transfer their bank account into their son or daughter's name or their brother and sister's name. Not smart. That's what we could call a fraudulent transfer where you're avoiding a debt that you have knowledge of. You transfer your property out of your name, which is really not smart to do because once you transfer that property out of your name, now somebody else is title owner on that property. Not good to do. That again could be considered fraudulent. Bottom line is, if you know that you are going to be sued and you believe that you have an aggressive creditor, don't put your head in the ground. You know, you could come and, and see our office on a consultation and we could guide you as to what to do. But the last thing you wanna do is run away from it because it will hound you. A lot of times we've talked in the past that on credit reports, you find out there's a judgment against you, you didn't even know it. Remember the IRS, they could levy on your bank account anytime they want if there's money that's owed. Uh, vehicles are exempt, I think, up to 15,000. I didn't check it before I did this, but vehicles, I believe, up to 15,000 are exempt, meaning that if you have a vehicle that's worth 10,000 and I have a judgment against you, that first $15,000 is exempt. We could check that on the statutes, but just know that vehicles are a form of exemption. Um, life insurance policies, cash value, for example, that could be executed against. Um, Understand that when you have a judgment against you, that any tangible asset that is liquid uh, can be executed against. And the exempt, there are exemptions there, like we've talked about, the homesteads, the 401ks, the IRAs, up to, I think it's 550,000 on IRAs. Just understand that, don't ignore it. If you get a letter from a collection agency, you know, call us, we'll see you on a consultation. Let's see what we could do. A lot of times, my son Robert and I will consolidate or, or negotiate the debt for you. So. There's a lot in this, but I just want you to understand, judgments has to be by court order. They're good for six years. They can't garnish your wages, garnish or execute on your bank accounts. Go after any other tangible asset. Homesteads, uh, retirement plans have a level of exemptions, of course. And understand that don't ignore the demand letter for money. It's very, very important. Bob, there's a question. What's the question? How do you know if you homesteaded? And if you modify your loan, do you have to homestead again? Okay, good question. So uh, it, the homestead is a form that you get from Office Max, and it has to be your domicile. It has to be your primary residence. So it can't be investment property. You go you could go to the Office Max and say, hey, I need a homestead form. It's self-explanatory. You sign it. Uh, you take it to the recorder's office, and you record it. That's how you know. It doesn't happen without you, the homeowner, being proactive in order to do that. What was the other question? Part if of you it? modify your loan, do you have to homestead again? No, you should not have to modify your loan. If you refinance your home, uh, my understanding has been that the escrow or title companies require you to take it, abandon the homestead, and then after you get refinanced, you put it back on. But a loan modification is not a refinance. It's just changing the terms it's not new money that's being given that has to go through an escrow. So your homestead should be fine on that. Good question though. Uh, so it's important uh, to understand that homestead only applies to primary residences, not investment properties, up to $550,000 in value. So uh, give us a call, Massey and Massey, 702-870-1100. Uh, My son, Robert, again, one of the areas uh, he does and has done with a colleague is credit credit repair. Uh, we're going to be boosting some information on this today because of that Equifax scam. Robert has seen several people to review their credit reports, no charge, to see if there's any violation anywhere uh, on their credit report. And if so, then he can help you. And again, our areas uh, are personal injury, uh, wills and trust, probate, and real estate business and legal consultations. Go to our website, uh, we're actually updating it, masseyandmassey.com. Um, share this with your friends. 
Yes. Uh, um, Michael Gregory, who asked the first question. Yeah, Mike. He says, it's a new loan. I don't remember if we homesteaded it when we first bought the house. Is there a way to check records? Yeah, you could go into recorder's office, Mike, and see if you recorded a homestead. But if you don't remember doing it yourself, the title company or the escrow company will not do it for you. Your realtor won't do it for you. Either a lawyer does it or you could do it on your own. There's no reason to go to the expense of a lawyer. Just go get the form and record it at the recorder's office. And then it's good. It's good. Good questions. And always feel free, you know, when I'm talking about any subject, if you have any questions and you're watching, just ask. I'll answer whatever I can. Share this with your friends. This is an important subject. Again, thank all of you uh, for the great city we live in. Pray for those who were victims and the families and those who still lay in a hospital. And pray that the FBI and the police get an answer to this tragedy. I'll see you next week.